And now, from Metal Gear Solid 5, here's the big boss. Please welcome Kiefer Sutherland. Thank you. It is an honor to be here back at the Game Awards, surrounded by visionaries and dreamers, people who are truly pushing the boundaries of storytelling, technology, and entertainment. I am deeply humbled to be a part of your world. But now it is time to recognize two true icons in the history of gaming. Here is their story. In real time was really a great ingredient to put into the mix because it it created this, this tension that didn't exist. When you're, you're playing a game, everything else is moving forward around you. Your competitor over here, your friends, whatever is going on, these things are happening simultaneously. Without Westwood Studios, you really don't have like a huge part of the modern gaming scene today. Real-time strategy, I think, is one of the last truly new forms of gaming. Younger gamers, everything that they're seeing now in games like League of Legends and Dota 2 really started with Westwood Studios back in the 90s. You know, the beginning was make money making games, right? Survive making games, like so many, still the same today, right? Two guys who started in a garage. I think they were kind of like the Jobs and the Wozniak. They were ambitious. And on top of that, they were just dorks like we were. So we were all in that same club. We were the independent developer doing our own originals by then, doing things like Legend of Akirandia and Lands of Lore and all this good stuff. I remember we went to Virgin and Virgin said, hey, we've got this great license for Doom. And Brett really loved the Doom books. I think it was his favorite book. And I went to Martin and I said, hey, I want to do a real-time strategy game. We could do this game like Military Madness, we could make it real time, it'd be tons of fun. He goes, that's a tough category, don't you think? I go, what do you mean, it doesn't even exist? Dune 2 was the first game that we all remember as kind of really starting the, the real-time strategy revolution. It gave gamers like a new way to think about how you were gonna interact with your computer. Prior to that, strategy games were turn-based. They were like chess. I go, you go. This kind of slow, boring dynamic. That notion that you could plot your strategy and set out to conquer the computer while they were doing the same thing at the same time was truly revolutionary at that moment. And it flew off the shelves and we sold millions of units and millions more got pirated. <laughs> The guys at Blizzard began playing Dune 2 and immediately had the idea for Warcraft. Dune 2 was clearly an inspiration to us. We really liked playing it, and we liked talking about it, and the only thing we couldn't do is play against each other. And so that was sort of the initial design vision. Go make a multiplayer version of Dune 2. And it, and it actually led to this really interesting kind of rivalry between the two. They were kind of the oasis and blur of the real-time strategy. Well, Westwood would release something and we'd respond to it. We'd release something and Westwood would respond to it. Both companies were just trying to one-up each other as much as we possibly could. I think that created an acceleration in the state of the art. And so there was a lot of competition between our companies to build something that was the best RTS in the world. What was interesting about all that, I said, you know what, at the end of the day, this is a prototype. I'm going to create something else without anybody's license, and it's going to be called Command and Conquer. With Command and Conquer, though, what we saw was a big evolution just in terms of production design, scope, scale. You know, Brett said, well, we've got this CD-ROM. What are we going to fill it with? I go, Brett, you know, you, you can't do full screen audio video. There's no way. And he goes, ah, oh, Lou, you're just being lazy. So we invented this media player to be able to play full screen audio and video. I am Kane. But I think they were among the first really great world builders who you know, really created a sense of time and place and the Command and Conquer universe really felt like a universe. This kind of cheesy, like B-movie 
uh, story while you were playing the strategy game. And it was purposely a cheesy B-movie. It wasn't like they set out to make Citizen Kane and this was the embarrassing result. Chandra, you son of a bitch. And we sold like a million copies in a week, which was just unheard of back then. It was a phenomenon at the time. And, and you know, we were kind of living it, we were swept up in it. You know, we just, we just captured lightning in a bottle for sure. I do think if you could go back and have kind of a back to the future type thing where we just removed Westford from gaming history, what does it look like today? I really do think it looks very different. Without Dune 2, you don't have Warcraft. You don't have Age of Empires. It's debatable whether Blizzard would have ever entered the real-time strategy genre. You don't have League of Legends. You don't have Dota. You certainly wouldn't have had the MOBA genre. It kind of goes on and on. It all starts with Westwood. The impact that they've had is going to be felt for generations to come. They started it, and every other strategy game you can practically think of evolves from there. Please welcome Brett Sperry and Lewis Castle. Wow. Um, thank you, everyone. And uh, gosh, it's, it's all about this. And you know what's interesting is that there's been so much evolution since those early, early days. You know, when, when Lewis and I and our whole team and, and a lot of great people are involved uh, started in gaming when it was, as you could tell by some of those graphics, <laughs> rather primitive, but we were limited. It wasn't our fault. We only had, you know, 16 colors, then 32, then 256. But anyhow, it's, it's wonderful to receive this reward. And, and thank you all for playing. And then for those of you who are creating, Entertaining software, entertainment software, keep pushing the limit. So, well, I just want to I just want to say on on behalf of the hundreds of people that were Westwood Studios, I couldn't possibly name them all and how many ma amazing contributions they made. Just want to thank them all for letting us live the dream, and especially thank the families, my family, the families of all the game makers out there. Because I got to tell you, you're the reason we can keep doing what we love to do. It's, uh, you're the ones who suffer when we're up late following our passions. And I gotta tell you, um, it really is a humbling experience to be up here and to see how far this industry's gone and how far it's going to go. It's uh, great fun to keep making games. Um, I'm still making them. I'm not gonna stop till I fall. <laughs> so.